Okay, hi everyone. I want to show you something. Now take a look at this. See, this is a drawing that I did around, I don't know, like almost 10 years ago. And the thing is that I've always been obsessed with motion and capturing movement and how to do it ever, ever like since the first time I've ever saw Disney's Tarzan, I wanted to try to do drawings that capture motion and movement. In fact, I have like another one. See this one, this is a guy climbing a tree. And the thing is that this week I'm going to try to get to the bottom of how to make the best action poses and how to capture movement the best way. And the reason why I need to do this is because I love this subject so much that I'm always scared to approach it because I fear of failing. Well, that ends this week. I even got like this super book for super cheap that looks pretty awesome. I'm going to be using it. And well, this is going to be a really great and personal challenge for me. But this is how I'm going to beat this and get great at doing action dynamic poses. My name is Javier I can draw. Let's do this. Okay, that beat that you just saw before the intro, that was actually shot yesterday. The thing is that uh, when I wanted to just sit down and make a video and start sketching, I realized that there's a lot of information that I'm missing regarding this. Information that I never actually bothered to look. And uh, I started doing research and I couldn't find exactly what I wanted and I was missing one big keyword. That keyword was animation. When we're talking about doing dynamic poses, animators are the ones that have the best knowledge, the best information, and the best way to do it. Because if they have to work in such a synthesized form, and they have to make everything simple and readable, they are the ones that know best about how to use line of action and, you know, muscles and anatomy and motion and whatever, they are the best at it. So I started doing some actual research that gave some actual results, and these are the best things that I found. Now, the first thing that I want to share with you is actually, it's just text, there's no image. And this is by Matt Jones and Alex Wu, and it talks about the principles of gesture and posing in animation. These are seven principles that are, you know, explained each of every one of them, what they mean. And as an introduction to gesture and posing, I think that is amazing. So you should actually read that. By the way, all the links are going to be on the link below. Go there, check it out. Also, after that, I um, found another article that was linked by some people on the Animation Mentor Forum. And this one is by, it's a blog that is called Fluby Nobody. And it actually deconstructs how posing and uh, the line of action works and how to use negative space. The negative space is like, for example, uh, this. And it uses uh, A Christmas Carol by Disney to show all the examples on posing and animation and gesture and line of action and all of that. It is like, it's really complete. And it's uh, like, I spent like, half an hour reading that. It's amazing. So you should check it out. And then after line of action, there is just one other big principle that is called silhouetting. Silhouetting means that if you are going to draw a person and it's going to be like entirely black that you don't see any details, you just see the silhouette, you should be able to read what the action is. It doesn't mean that you have to see every limb what they're doing, but you should see the direction and you should see how they're standing or not standing or jumping or whatever, but you should read what is going on with just looking at the silhouette. So I have this uh, blog post by Mark McDonald that is about silhouetting. I recommend you read it. And I know that I usually just post like a lot of videos and a lot of images, but in this one, there's just a lot of text because there is just a lot of theory to go through. And finally, well, you know, there is a Tumblr that is called Grace and Norm. These are two Disney animators. Every Tuesday they do some tips on uh, drawing and animation and I just realized that they do a lot on gesture and posing and using the line of action and character design. So as usual, 
When I do this type of videos, I always have a link to a Pinterest board where I have more tutorials and more things on top of the ones that I just shown you. And on that one, you're going to just find a lot of reason norm quick tips that are super, super useful. And that the, uh, they are a continuation of the first blog post on the seven principles on gesture. And I think that they're amazing. I just learned a lot from just looking at them and I can wait to start practicing. Finally, I wanted to show you something else that has to do with the importance of the line of action. This is a series of photographs by the artist Vlad Artisov. And this is just photographs about nails and it's nails acting as people and it's just a nail. But it's just one big line of action with a nail head and you can see the importance of the line of action and getting a good read of what the movement is, uh, movement is about in this image. So I want you to take a look at it. The pictures are, the photos are amazing, and it was, it was they're pretty funny too. So if you don't know what are the basics about doing an action pose or a dynamic pose or the principles of posing mostly on animation, please go to the post that is linked below so you can see all the links to all the information that you need because I'm going to use it. Now let's get to the good stuff. What I have here are pictures from the book that I showed you yesterday. It is a book by Edward Mybridge. And back in the, I think, 40s, he took a lot of pictures about people doing different actions. So I took some that I thought that might be useful for doing this. All of them are pretty good, but I, you know, I, I don't want to make this video a lot long. And it's going to be a little longer and I may have to edit this. I don't know. So let's do it. So what I have here is a man running. This is a really simple page. Um, it's a man running, it's a simple pose. Now I was looking at this one and I was like, well, which one is the one that I like the most and what is the most dynamic? And I thought about this one and this one. So I grabbed this one here and I really like how it looks. And you know, both feet are in the air and the pose is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use some of the principles that are, you know, that are on the links about how to draw poses and I'm going to try to get it right. I need a little practice, so that's what I'm going to do. So first we start with the line of action. Now, the line of action in this particular case, I think that it would be this one, something like this. I can see him running. Now, the second thing that you have to do is actually says basic shapes. That is the part that is kind of hard for me to understand. But if I had to do, like it says that in dynamic poses, poses everything is like a triangle or a stretched rhombus. So if, I, if it had to be a triangle, it would be something like this. Kinda like this. So, I don't know about this triangle. I need to figure out exactly how I'm going to use it without when I want to draw without any reference. But yeah, at least it's still helping me just a bit to figure out what I want to do. So, when I have to draw now, if I'm going to start drawing the body, one of the principles is exaggeration. So I'm gonna exaggerate. So I want the head to be here. Be like this. I want this leg to go like further like this. You know, just exaggerate every motion just a bit more. So something like this, right? So yeah, it does look like it's running. In fact, I could just exaggerate this just a bit more, maybe? Mm, I don't know. Kind of something like this, maybe. In fact, maybe I just want to exaggerate this one a little bit more. Yeah, that's more like it, right? So if I if, if we if you looked at this and this was well it is a pretty silhouetted shape because it doesn't have much more detail but 
it does also respond to the principle of that it has to be clear, understandable silhouette, right? So let's move to another one. Now, what I'm thinking is that all of these pictures that I have here are also um, on profile, so silhouetting must is probably like easier. Some principles also had to do with relations to space and story and whatnot, but those just kind of don't apply to this picture, so I'm going to skip them. I'm going to be looking at them later. So we have these two kits. One is jumping on top of the other and then moving forward. I love this. What I like about this one is that like if you start paying attention of the lines of action, the lines of action actually give you an insight of the movement. So you have something like this. And it moves forward like this and then it stretches again. And it's like, you can see this and you can see the motion of jumping just with those simple lines, right? So I thought like, which one is the best here for drawing? And I actually like this one. I don't think that this picture actually represents exactly what I wanted to get right. But if you go and look at the line of action, if I'm going to really exaggerate it, it's going to be something like this. You know, and this, this is like a really well-defined triangle for the whole shape thing that I still don't know how to use, right? But I know I said that like 30 seconds ago, but if I want to make this jump look like more vivid, I'm going to just stretch the leg here. I'm going to like really carve this here. Put the hands here and I'm gonna like, I will just lift this leg. It gives it a lot more sense of direction, right? Like considering to the pictures, this jump looks like it's going to fall a lot further than where the kid actually lands. But still, it looks a lot better. Maybe just like this, maybe you can just, uh, no, wait. Maybe you can just lower the head just a bit. I can just... nope. I can just move this here. Something like this. Maybe not hunch the shoulders, but actually... Ugh. Bringing them down a bit. I don't know, I'm just trying. I like where the legs are. But I know that I'm doing something wrong with the arms. I still haven't figured out what. This, well, it still looks good enough. I still have a lot to learn. Okay, so this one, this is someone throwing like some kind of rock or ball or whatever. I thought that the one that I liked to represent the whole movement, because that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find like which one of these pictures can actually give me a sense that all of that has happened before and all of, the, of what's coming next. I think that this one is the one Maybe just the next one, because it's just a bit more exaggerated, but if I'm going to do this... Okay, let's see. So this is pretty clear. And the shape is also very clear. You can, I can actually see this triangle in every one of the shapes. I just don't know what to use it for. So if I'm going to exaggerate, like it's going to come here. This is probably to come like around here or so. And I'm also going to extend this, I guess. And you know what? The arm is here in this particular case, but I just want to have it here. I think it gives a lot more sense of direction. Check this out. In fact, I could move this just a bit more. It adds a lot to the twist. Throwing the rock, it's just like, whew. right? So using a lot of reference is giving me a lot of insight into how to approach this process. I'm really nervous about what to do when I don't have any reference. So on this one, what I have uh, here 
is a man throwing also something out of a rock. Actually, this picture should be flipped horizontal so you can read it from left to right. And the thing about this one, and I'm going to flip this again as well. The thing about this one is that I think that there are three motions. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to flip this one again. If we read from right to left, I think that there are uh, three moments where you can understand completely what th this character is doing. And I, well, my conflict with this one is that I don't really know exactly which one to choose. I think it really depends on the context of the story that you want to tell, right? Because like, for example, the one on the left has a lot of anticipation. <clears throat> and you can see that like there's this curve here. It's like this is, is like, you can see all the tension coming to this arm. Like I will move this maybe just a bit. And also the feet going forward gives it a lot of sense of direction. What if the arm was extended? If the arm was extended and the head would come like this here. Let me check. There. I'm not doing so great with this arm. How do I solve this? Um, maybe like this? Does it read well? With the whole silhouetting thing, is, is it understandable what he's about to do? You kind of get it, right? He's about to throw something. Yeah, I kind of see it. And for the other ones, let's see. Hmm. This one. I will actually go like up. Like this. Maybe not have the arm where it is, but just a bit higher. Let's see, if I put the arm higher and I bring all the tension, still like having this like this. Let me see, I don't think I'm getting it right. How does it look? Uh, this tension, well, it's hard to bring. You know, to get like the the right read on the momentum of all of all this force going forward. Um, no, no feet in the air. Both feet needs to be on the ground. Maybe if I get some... Uh... Mm, I don't know. I don't know about this one. I think I still have something to learn about this one. Okay. I don't want to waste any more time. I'm going to the next. And this one, eh, I think that it might be easier to exaggerate and get. Because it would be something like this. And I don't know what to do with the shape, really. Is it? But I want the arm to just go all the way, bring this forward. Bring this like this, and maybe just get this tension here. Like this, right? Uh, 
me just bring this up just a bit more. I'm being super sketchy, I know, but I'm just trying to get what is the most like minimal clear impression of movement. See, I can see this one. It looks pretty dynamic. I see this one, the one in the middle. Eh, I don't know. Like you're, um, no, I don't know how to solve that one. I'm going to have to come back later for that one. So what else we have? Okay, so like anticipation. I, you know, there's one picture after, before kicking the ball and after kicking the ball. It's all blurred out where it should be. I didn't want to have like anyone trying to censor the video because you see some testicles flying at the same time that someone is kicking a ball. So, okay, let's try to get this right. And I think it's going to be the last one because I don't want to make this, you know, so long. So, hmm, let's see. So in this one, the ball is being kicked. Somehow, it's like from this particular angle, it feels weird because the foot that is actually kicking the ball is kind of not in the motion because it's going up like this. Maybe this is the actual motion. Uh, let me see. How does it look? I know I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting sketchy with each drawing. Nah, I don't know what to say about this foot. Maybe no. That looks like a Russian man dancing. this the feet really help to give a sense of direction to where, where the person is moving like the feet that is going to be on the floor always try to point it towards the action yeah i would need some like really nice foreshortening here to get this foot right but it doesn't look that bad either now regarding anticipation and you know what let's just do this. And regarding anticipation before kicking, now what is the best way? So I clearly see this curve here. And if I had to do like, if, if I had to stop it as a, as a shape, it would be something like this. But the thing is that I want this leg to come like really from behind. Really, this would come like this. And is it like, is this head coming towards the ball? It could be. The shoulder is going to be tilted like... This, look, it's how silly, but look the difference that like doing this tiny line, like instead of doing it like this, you just do it like this. And it brings a lot of di direction towards the ball. It's those tiny, silly stuff that are so hard to grasp when you're trying to learn this stuff. It's just a lot of trial and error until you get it right. So this, like this, let's give it some better. Uh, I don't know about it. I don't feel a lot of anticipation. Maybe if this wasn't forward, maybe this. No, no, that doesn't work. Hmm. So you see, maybe it's a lot easier to tr to do the movements about something that is already happening or has happened. Like for example, because the, the two of uh, these drawings that I'm having trouble with is before kicking the ball and where, where is it? Where is it? And while a character is throwing the ball and maybe those are the two hardest things to grasp, like before a movement, before a motion, and uh, during the motion, and not after. So, the other one I have here 
is like these two men wrestling. Now, if I have to be honest with you, I think that each and every one of these pictures is awesome for drawing. Maybe like, you know, maybe not the last one, but the rest of them are pretty good. And I, well, there's one of them that I'm like truly in love with. And that is, uh, where is it? This one. This one just looks awesome. And I want to, to try to get it right. And that's going to be the last one because I have another ones, but you know, this video is long enough as it is. Okay, so this one, like, this is super clear, and this is super clear. Like, all the action, if you look at those two curves, look at them. All the action is going towards this point, which is exactly what is happening. And... Like, this guy is this triangle here, and this guy is this mess over here. This one, this one, I don't even need to exaggerate this one, it's so clear. Like, maybe this arm here. This is so fun. I love, love this image. I mean, fun to draw, not fun to have someone actually toss you like that. I wouldn't want that. And then... Let's see, and this guy here, just bring this neck really forward. It's really pressing against him. Maybe it's in the, just a leg like this. Now this is getting really hard to read. But still, I kind of like it. I can work some more on this guy. Oh, I know, I know, maybe like what I can do. Let's just put one leg here. Maybe just the other one here to bring it a little forward. Or what if I do the opposite? What if I just... No, I'm stretching it too much. So maybe this leg, maybe that's the best position for the leg for this movement. It also still brings a lot of attention to this place. Okay, so that's going to be it for today, but what do you think? Because like using this type of reference, I think that it, it, it has become really useful. I know that there are certain motions that really depend on where the whole motion is pointing towards. I know that the line of action is supposed to help you with that, but... I think that there might be something more about this that I want to keep exploring. Um... Take a look at this. So what I have here is one page of a Spider-Man Deadpool comic book. That one, it came out, I think that it was last week. And this one is drawn by Ed McGuinness. I love how he draws because he gets to be cartoony and at the same time is like really this comic book feel that is amazing. Like he can be pretty silly or pretty serious when he needs to. He's an amazing artist. But he has this page here, this splash, pa splash page at the beginning of the issue. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, maybe this is a good one for like analyzing just a bit because it's really simple. But let's start with the line of action that would help the composition. Now you have this lines of action here determining the movement that both of the characters are making. Spider-Man, Deadpool, and there's also this bear monkey person there. And if you look at it, it's like super clear. And that's what I'm trying to find here. Because when we're thinking about complex movements like jumping and kicking and fighting and whatnot, we may get a little bit tangled or where to put the arms and the legs and how the body is moving. But I think that this is so clear, especially because you get a great sense of direction. I mean, like this one is super obvious, but in this one you have this leg and you have this arm. So you know that Spider-Man is kind of going this way. You have both limbs pointing away. And I underestimate a lot 
that when you're doing this type of action poses, conveying a sense of direction is super important. And well, if we continue with the analysis that we've been doing on the last video, you have like the poses are going to be two triangles and you can see that these are two triangles that are also being like super pointy. So actually thinking about some basic shapes that could define the pose, it could help a bit. I'm going to try on like on next video or tomorrow, I'm going to try to do this by myself without any reference or anything. So I'm going to see if I can figure out how to use these shapes. So these are the shapes and actually, well, you know, this bear thing getting kicked is also getting like some triangle shape like this. These two triangles, one on top of each other, help the composition a lot. And now, since we were talking about silhouetting, which is something I didn't explore on yesterday, I wanted to look at this in silhouettes. So if you do silhouettes for these three characters, and this works for the other characters as well, except for maybe this two that are just getting stuck there and it's a bit confusing, but for the rest of them it works. Look at these silhouettes, they, they can't be any clearer. Even if I like shut this down, you can still see what's going on, you, you understand everything and that's what I love about this. And I think that my approach to, to these action poses was that by thinking that the character was doing something complex, the, the drawing had to be complex itself, but it doesn't have to be this way, it had to be like, it, can, it has to be always as simple as possible. And I, it sounds so obvious, but I didn't approach this ever like this. And now I love these ideas and I can't wait to get drawing. I think I'm going to just finish this video and start drawing. And last, because I, well, this is a short video because last one was so long. But last, I want to focus just a bit on one page of a comic book that I love. Now this comic book is called We Three. This is by Grant Morrison, uh, Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely. And like oh, the movement on this page, look at this, it's amazing. I mean, it uses the panels to give a sense of depth that has to do with what the comic book is doing because these cybernetic animals from this Wii 3 comic book, they sense space and time in a different way. So you can see this animal sensing time in a different way. That's what the panels show. And it's so good, look at this, it's like an action scene in just one panel, or several panels, but just one image, it's amazing. And what I was looking at this, it's like, I love this panel so much, I'm kind of obsessed with it, I would have like a poster of this panel, just this panel. And I thought like, well, but what is the movement, because you have, like, of course that, that if you are going to have just one direction, just one motion, it's going to be something like, it starts here and it ends here, so of course it is like this. I mean, this this animal here is on the middle of the composition, but the animal is not actually moving that way. He's like doing something like this. And if you look at the line of action on this image, it looks something like this. And if you get uh, rid of the drawing, it looks like there's an... That, there's a knife, like knife, uh, slicing something, like a ninja with a sword or something like that. That just fits perfectly this cat character because he's using its its nails to cut through these soldiers. And this is so simple, but so complex. But you can see that you can see that it starts with just one line, one direction. Here it goes from here to there, and then it starts playing around through all of these motions and it looks so good. I know that the comic book is a little bit gory, but it's, oh, it's so good. It's just three issues. If you have $10 or I don't know how much it is, it's probably like $10, just buy this comic book. It's amazing. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show you just to analyze a bit just uh, how it is used in comic books to convey action which, you know, it's just a bit extra exploration on what we've been seeing on the other days. Uh, so the next video is just I'm going to try to set up some sort of action scene. I'm going to try to think of a script in my mind because I think that having a sense of direction and action and thinking what the hell the characters are doing besides just looking good 
is going to help me a lot to get this right. So what I want to show you more than anything, because I don't want to draw too much on the screen, maybe that's what you came looking for, but it can become really boring if it's just a long video of someone drawing. But I want to show you some of the process that I've been doing to get these dynamic poses right from everything that I've learned these days. So I'm going to start with this one that I've been sketching. Let me see where it is. It's this one here. Now take a look at this. This is what I started drawing uh, and I thought like, well, let's try to get this pose to be dynamic. Now, uh, this pose is a mess. Like if I had to show you what I don't like about this, that is just about everything, is like, well, even though I tried to convey this sense of direction going like this, which is like pretty okay, there's a break here that kind of goes against the flow of the motion and I don't know, like this pose is not resisting too much of the punch that is coming towards him, like this should be a lot leaner like this and I said, okay, I'm going to work on it, and when I work, correcting some of those mistakes was this. And I like this one a lot more, and I know that this arm is actually like pretty large, and it's not anatomically correct, but I'm liking the pose much better. I think that, well, there are things that I want to change about this, but it's getting a lot closer, and I, you know, this change about getting this uh, line of action to be more like this, it, it actually changed a lot, the, the dynamic is still bringing all the attention towards this point, so I thought like, well, I want to work this to be, like, it doesn't look so much as a thing of resistance, and I don't think I like this twist here, so I made one extra change, and get ready, ta -da! And, and this one is just, well, it makes me a lot happier. It has a lot of work to do, but if I just show you what I was doing at the beginning, that was this, this is awful, and this one is, well, it's better. So I changed, I changed the twist, and now all of this character direction is going here, even the foot is helping to bring that movement, like the character is going like this, kind of resisting what's going on. I'm going to delete this, because I need to delete this if I'm going to use it for the thumbnail. I don't know if I'm going to use it for the thumbnail. And then I corrected this character's leg to be more straightforward and help at this. And this is the part where I am... Well, I want to show you one more thing. It's just one more drawing that I was just working just a few minutes ago. This one I did yesterday, but I was working... On, I, I was thinking about maybe doing this video where I was going to draw different poses and analyze them and whatnot, but I think that I, I kind of started working on a pose and I found myself in trouble and I think that I want to solve this right here, like on camera, live. So, this is someone throwing a kick and this is someone resisting this kick. Now I'm taking a look at this and I would like to maybe just make this character wait. Where is this guy? Okay, I want to make this character just a bit smaller because it looks like a giant compared to the other one. Eh, I think it's more or less. It's all pretty sketchy, okay? But I was thinking, and, and the, the thing that, that I'm having a conflict about is you see this character throwing the kick while well, he's missing an arm. And I started sketching and sketching and I was thinking like, where should the arm go? And the third thing I thought is like, well, like this pose, something like this. And uh, I don't know, it started breaking the dynamic of the pose, like this shoulder is all wrong. So I was thinking about, well, maybe this shoulder is wrong, because if I had to draw the spine of this character, it would come like something like here. So maybe the shoulder should be here. So it's like, should I put the arm here like this? And it's like, no, that's like super unnatural. And it's, well, should it be something like this? And it's just like, no, that still doesn't look any good. 
So I started thinking what I'm trying to do wrong here and I found something that is going to help me a lot. What is that? Well, that is actually the triangle shape that I've been using when I was trying to analyze the poses. I didn't know what it was for, but if I'm thinking that all of the direction of the character is coming here, there's going to be a triangle that is going to be on this shape. And this character is posing this way. So you can see that everything is coming this way, like this is the point. And the sense of direction of this character is going to be all of this. It's all going this way. So, well, what I had to do is try to rethink, like, well, what can make me help this character uh, look like everything of the character is going that way? Because right now I get the feeling that this particular pose is not helping as much as I would like it to help. I mean, sure, the leg is going this way and I'm helping a bit with this leg, trying to get like this motion right. But it's still like there's something just a bit wrong. And I started thinking about it, how I was going to solve it. And I think that the secret is actually here. I think that I have to change the torso here so I can bring like the column is going to be here. It's still going to be moving this way, I can bring the shoulder this way, like this. Here, the arm is going to be here, I'm not being like really anatomically correct. But now that I have this here, and now that I have the shoulder here, I can start thinking, well, let me see. Actually, what I can just simply do here is just bring it like this. But suddenly thinking that the axis of this is going to help me with this triangle gave me a lot more sense of what the pose should be. So in a way, what I'm trying to say is because, well, if every time I wanted to draw these kind of action poses and I didn't understand what to do, it's like because I didn't know where to put the arms or maybe one leg was just, I don't know what to do with this particular leg. You know, you know that feeling, right? When you're trying to do like this awesome Spider-Man pose or something like that and it's like, I don't know what to do with the arms. So one arm is going to be like this and the other one is going to be like that. So when you are in doubt, it's like think about the triangle. And it, honestly, it, it just helped me a lot to solve this pose. And I know it's not the best pose in the world because I have, still have a long way to go. But, you know, I couldn't solve it when I had the torso in the opposite way and actually trying to think on this triangle here helped me a lot to figure that out and in fact I don't know like I'm thinking well right now I, I might screw this up but I don't know if maybe it will help if this character that is like blocking I need some reference kit okay maybe that this character that is blocking maybe he shouldn't have the leg there but maybe just help the triangle Oh, does it look better? Maybe just a bit too exaggerated. But it works, I think I like it a lot better. So once you start working on the shape of the character, like don't do... You know, when, when we were analyzing the, the images just a few days ago, I just... I was first doing the line of action and then trying to get that triangle because I didn't know what to do with it, but the secret is not, well, just do the line of action and then work on the triangle, it's just do the line of action, start working on the character, and then try to figure out what, what the triangle or what moves the motion forward would be. And on base of that, try to figure out everything else. So get a quick basis of what the character is doing and then work regarding that motion and that sense of direction. Try to figure out what the rest is going to do, but not before. And uh, in, in the end, like if I had to see like, what is the advice that what is the everything I got from this is that everything should always help the sense of direction, the motion. 
if you're going to do dynamic poses, the pose is going somewhere. All of the energy of the pose is going to a place. Like, get on that triangle shape and make everything help that direction, that sense of movement. Everything has to be helping pointing to a point in the composition. Pointing to a point? And this is like... I think it's going to help me a lot. In fact, I was thinking about, you know, I, I know that it's like super late to join in October, but I'm still going to try to do it and try to catch up on the days. And I think that I am going to do like all these inky action poses that I want to work on. I'm going to make like this uh, list of action poses and I'm going to work on ink so I get a good practice on action poses and I get a good practice on inking. So that's going to be it for today and that's going to be it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you find this useful. I know that I'm presenting this like this is some sort of revelation or something, but in my personal case, well, it is. I actually think that I found something that will help me a lot in the future. And I hope that it helps you too. My name is Javi and I can draw. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next week. Bye.